in the grand scheme of things, when you go to somebody's record collection, they're going to reach for the Dylan. They're going to reach for Aerosmith. Uh, they're going to reach for Arcade Fire if that's what they like. But in my little corner of the world, I just want to know that I did enough that sometimes you may also reach for mine because something I did in the last 30 years, whether, whether it was one of the bands, 007, Seismic Waves, Theory on Blondes, Booty Fruit, whoever it was that recorded that you still have a craving for it, it completes three minutes of your life to listen to this song one more time. I take my time when I travel around the globe by computer And try to make a choice Take it to a place where the setting's so surreal Where the girls can be girls and boys will be boys I make adventures into love Discover something about the species that I never would expect It ain't so easy when they advertise attraction Filtered by computer to natural select No, I'm not thinking, you're not thinking Hey, we're both not thinking so tell me the story about the time you and your girlfriends went out drinking at a club and it ended up in divorce court. Without making it sound too boring, there was a point in life where I tried internet dating. And when it, when it really comes down to it, the mold I fit in as an individual you know, being a, a black punk rocker, northwestern educated uh, smart ass. The, the typical tenets of being whatever you expect a guy to be when it comes time for relationships doesn't ne necessarily match out on a dating site. And for the month that I paid for, you found out that the people you chatted with the best lived the furthest away. Sometimes they weren't even in the country. The closer you get to home, the weirder they get. But the ones that were always eager to talk to you were divorced moms of two and four kids. And I decided I wasn't ever going to do that again. It's probably been about 10 years. And I wrote that song probably right when I left. today I don't mind I'm getting carried away because I'm handsome I'm dashing a way to be free I have this feeling I know this but what can it be could it be love at recitus That song's about a guy who wanted to win the affections of a girl who claimed to be athletic and, and decided that what he needed to do in life was to catch up to her as a runner because he used to be a runner in high school or something. He was much later in life. <laughs> and while training, got bursitis. Uh, I myself had it because I slammed my knee into the bathroom door one day and it swelled up and you don't really realize what's wrong with your bursa sack until you need it. And it would just burn and burn and burn until it built one back up and you need to stay off it and let it heal. And he didn't and he used to just hobble around at the job I worked at. So when it came time to write lyrics for the song, it was just really easy. Everything fit into place. The ailments aren't his, they're mine. But the concept dates back to those events. <laughs> <laughs> about a girl I chased around years ago 
who, after a, a lengthy She's probably going to buy the CD. I am not going to leave this one out. Okay, that's a... But, but what, what it's about is breaking up, using some of the densest metaphor to, to communicate. My favorite line in it is, if all the past and future worlds collide, the present tense is what I still fear the most. Um... Uh, just saying you're over with somebody and you need to move on that that person i told no more pedestal for you i'm, I'm gonna treat you like a regular person and she said who put you up to this and the answer was nobody i thought of that myself though the correct answer was you <laughs> you put me up to this why would you think anybody else would and we'll just leave it at that <laughs> I am the vulture of love, I circle around, I'm watching your love, I move without sound, I'll be breaking your fall as you fall from the heights of love. As I circle around, I'm lurking around, I'm watching your love, I move without sound, I'll be breaking your fall as you fall from the heights of love. And as you're all alone, as you walk away. Vulture of Love was about a girl I knew in college. I, I had her in one class, and she kind of stood out. I mean, just sometimes you meet people that really set your world in an odd orbit. And she is the only girl who shall remain nameless, but she is the only girl that I actually wrote a short story about because there was a period in the 80s where I communicated with my friends in college and we used mail, <laughs> you know, put a stamp on it, type things out. And instead of just writing everybody a different letter, I used to just combine it all. Xerox, one of them got the original the other one got the others got copies and this at that point i think was the longest short story because i hadn't written any of them in a while and i sent them 24 pages single space type where in college you couldn't get me to write five pages double space for a grade uh but she left a weird dent and and it was a it was a good one it went well but it, ran, it went unrequited because back then I was too dumb to go, so do you have a boyfriend? And that just kept things going on and on and on. So talking about that story to another friend of mine from, from Northwestern, I was like, yeah, but, you know, it, it failed, but it went so well, I'll get my chance. You know, one day i'll i'll he'll he'll fail or they'll lose interest or something and i'll just be the proverbial vulture of love and swoop in and pick his bones and a friend of mine the same the same guy we're talking about a metalhead he just kind of stopped for a second and interrupted me and goes you're gonna use that right and i was like use what I said vulture of love swoop in pick his bones i said no i hadn't even thought of it I just set it off the top of my head. And a few days later, it's like, that'd be cool. We'll make a song out of it. And... Student numbers, not as one last nature's oddity. One million years times 65. It says that like I say. Some of them before a time that men would see the light. To close their eyes, there is one left that fits to sleep tonight. Their footsteps echo, turn the page, and their existence fades away. Is their life more like mine today? Back to a band of mine. It was, it was called 007, and it is the only song on there that is co-written 
because when the song was originally written, I made the music, and I made a lyric that was probably a little bit darker than, than what actually came out in the final version, and I decided that my bandmate and longtime best friend, guy who's actually producing my solo CD, uh, should sing it, because for years in that band, if you wrote it, you sang it, and I thought we should start branching out and writing for each other. So I basically wrote a song, handed him the lyric, and he said, cool. Two weeks later, he came back, and, and tossed my lyric sheet and replaced it with his. It still has the same lyrical rhythm, still has the same flow, but the the bleakness of, of that last dinosaur, which, you know, dinosaurs roamed the earth, and then one by one they all kind of fell off, and nobody really knows why, but archaeologists keep digging to figure out whatever, and however they disappeared. Uh, I think we use that metaphor just to talk about, you know, as an individual, will you be the last one or when you'll be the last one? And it was supposed to be the title track to our full length album because we had just put out a six song EP, five song EP. Uh, and we we're going to title it When Dinosaurs Roam the Earth. And we we're going to do a an LP cover backdrop of either some drawings or photographs, like the cartoon Land of the Lost, with just giant dinosaurs just, you know, kind of in poses or growling, and then little tiny us running from it. But the band ran out of gas. Song. If he wasn't such a good friend, I'd be pissed off on Adam for rewriting the lyric, because I do pride in the lyrics that I write. But he did do a good job. Close their eyes, there is one left that missed us sleep tonight. My heartbeat echoes, turn the page, and their existence fades away. It's their life more like a mind today. Oh, I know. I'm not a dinosaur. 